from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, May the 9th, 2022. Well, after a nearly 60-hour massive manhunt, the two Palestinian terrorists who murdered three people Thursday night in the city of El Ad were apprehended yesterday morning. The two were found in a forested area not far from the site of the attack. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett in his weekly cabinet meeting yesterday commended the security forces and said capturing the murderers is not enough. We are at the start of a new stage in the war on terrorism. Those who incite cannot rest easy. Those who throw matches cannot run away. Bennett then announced the creation of a National Guard and an operation to target the issue of Palestinians who enter Israel illegally from the West Bank, like the two terrorists did, and those who transport or employ them. And in a tragic twist, one of the victims of the El Ad attack worked as a driver and completely unknowing of their identity or their intentions, drove the terrorists from the West Bank security barrier into El Ad, where they killed him and then set off to attack the others. Last night, a Palestinian man infiltrated the West Bank Jewish settlement of Tekoa armed with a knife. An Israeli resident who also works as a security officer in Tekoa spotted the man from his porch and ran to get his weapon. When he emerged from his home, he saw the terrorist just outside waving a knife at him, and he shot and killed the terrorist. Just hours earlier, an Israel police officer was stabbed by a Palestinian terrorist in Jerusalem's old city. After raising suspicions, police had brought the terrorist into a security booth for questioning, and he took out the knife and stabbed one of the officers in the neck, moderately injuring him. The other officers then shot the terrorist who was found to have another knife on him. The terrorist was critically injured. Both he and the officer were taken to Hadassah Hospital for treatment. Israel's coalition opened the Knesset summer session today, facing an unknown future with several members of Prime Minister Bennett's Yamina party having recently left the coalition, leaving it and the opposition with now equal numbers. But the coalition did succeed today in voting down two no-confidence motions. Shahar Azani will look at the current political situation on In the News coming up after this newscast. Well, the person suspected of sending threatening letters to Prime Minister Bennett and his family was arrested. Israel police said the suspect is a 65-year-old woman from southern Israel. As we reported to you, the letters included death threats and even a bullet. Police in Portland, Oregon arrested a 34-year-old man and charged him with threatening anti-Semitic graffiti found at Congregation Beth Israel, which we reported to you about on Friday. According to Willamette Week, he was also charged with breaking a window at another synagogue and setting fire to the Muslim Community Center of Portland. He was charged with one count of arson in the first degree and three counts of criminal mischief in the first degree. Well, the Church of England issued an apology for anti-Jewish laws passed 800 years ago. Vatican News wrote that a special service was held and live-streamed yesterday at Christ Church Cathedral in Oxford for the 8th centenary anniversary of the Synod of Oxford, passed in the year 1222, which forbade social interactions between Jews and Christians and placed a specific tithe on Jews and required them to wear an identifying badge, ultimately leading to the mass expulsion of England's 3,000 Jews of the time in 1290. Among the distinguished attendees at the service yesterday was Britain's chief rabbi, Ephraim Mervis, who spoke of the milestone, stressing there is still so much that needs to be done. 1222 is identified by historians as being a turning point. And it was a notorious turning point. Let us guarantee that 2022 will be seen by future historians as a turning point for the better. Let us ensure that we will strengthen Jewish Christian understanding, that we will celebrate what we have in common and understand and respect each other. 
for our differences. Let us guarantee that we will stand together in order to fight against all forms of hatred and bigotry and racism wherever they are carried out and against whoever they are perpetrated. Representatives of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, were also present at the service yesterday, and Welby tweeted afterwards, Let us pray it inspires Christians today to reject contemporary forms of anti-Judaism and anti-Semitism and to appreciate and receive the gift of our Jewish neighbors. Turning now to some entertainment news, popular band Maroon 5 is in Israel for two sold-out shows tonight and tomorrow in Tel Aviv. Lead singer Adam Levine, who is Jewish, was seen earlier this weekend at the Kotel, the Western Wall, in Jerusalem's Old City. He also shared a message upon his arrival in the country from his hotel balcony in Tel Aviv about the city. Even more beautiful than I, uh, than I had imagined. Super excited special amazing by the way joining the band on stage will be an israeli street musician and singer whom levine happened to hear from that balcony koral bismut taking a look now at our programming for tonight on jbs for monday may the 9th at seven o'clock a panel discussion on the new film the survivor the hbo original film based on the remarkable holocaust story of boxer harry haft that's from Sinai Temple with the film's producers, Mati Leshem and Joel Greenberg, and actor Billy Magnuson. Followed by Eric Goldman's interview with the film's director, Barry Levinson. At 8 on In the Spotlight, Amy Bloom talks to Abigail Pogrebin about her book, In Love, A Memoir of Love and Loss, about her husband's battle with Alzheimer's. At 8.30, a look inside the Jewish family with therapist Esther Perel. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Holocaust survivor and war veteran Michael Taylor, who shares his remarkable story on L'Chaim. At 10, Jewish comic Judy Gold speaks at the 92nd Street Y. And coming up next, Shachar Azani speaks with political and legal correspondent for the Times of Israel, Carrie Keller Lynn who shares her insights for the future of Naftali Bennett's coalition. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, May the 9th, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.